Well, mm, mm, mm. All right, listen up, boys. The ribs are gonna be on the smoker. Debbie's making her world famous lemon squares. And neither one of you bums have yet to RSVP to my New Year's Eve party to watch the ball drop. Watch the ball drop? Yeah. When in the last millennium have you stayed up past 7.30, old man? <laughs> and besides that, did you get those ribs approved by your cardiologist? I did. He's bringing the hot links. Sure, yeah. So he can charge you for another stint. And by the way, not that it's any of your beeswax, but the queen and I, we have plans for later today. Ooh. Look, I don't mean to be spilling tea here, but your wife does not need to be on the back of a Harley Davidson. Some wigs just don't look good in a helmet. <laughs> we're taking the Toyota. Oh, yeah. And we're going to the cemetery to wish a happy new year to our real friends, because that's where all of them are, including the fourth leaf. To our lucky clover. Domino, Domino Dan. Domino Dan. Dan. Uh, playing baseball with Jesus. Mm -hmm. Dan always came to my New Year's parties every year. Mm. I didn't even have to invite him. He just came. Unlike the two of you. I used to ring in the New Year with a bang. I did. So I had big thoughts of better and more. <laughs> I'd say to myself, maybe this year will be different. You ever have that year, boys? You know, the one where everything went right. <laughs> yeah, me neither. Tell you what I did run into was God. And his mercies. They are new every morning. That's what the good book says, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's a do-over. Every day is a do-over. That's what New Year's is to me. It is a gift from God of 365 new beginnings. Now, who don't want that? Amen. The Lord said to Moses, Consecrate to me every firstborn male. The first offspring of every womb among the Israelites belongs to me, whether man or animal. Then Moses said to the people, Commemorate this day, the day you came out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery, because the Lord brought you out of it with a mighty hand. Eat nothing containing yeast, Today, in the month of Abib, you are leaving. When the Lord brings you into the land of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Hivites, and Jebusites, the land he swore to your forefathers to give you, a land flowing with milk and honey, you are to observe the ceremony in this month. For seven days, eat bread made without yeast, and on the seventh day, hold a festival to the Lord. Eat unleavened bread during those seven days. Nothing with yeast in it is to be seen among you, nor shall any yeast be seen anywhere within your borders. On that day, tell your son, I do this because of what the Lord did for me when I came out of Egypt. This observance will be for you like a sign on your hand and a reminder on your forehead that the law of the Lord is to be on your lips. For the Lord brought you out of Egypt with his mighty hand. In days to come, when your son asks you, what does this mean? Say to him, with a mighty hand, the Lord brought us out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. When Pharaoh stubbornly refused to let us go, the Lord killed every firstborn in Egypt, both man and animal. This is why I sacrifice to the Lord the first male offspring of every womb and redeem each of my firstborn sons. Y'all don't mind, y'all clap your hands out there. I'm gonna take y'all back. Oh, so 
and mercy from me through I'm living this moment because of you I want to thank you and praise you too your grace and mercy love love it brought me through. Y'all remember that? Come on. Mm. Say, your grace and mercy brought me through. I'm needed this moment because of you. I want to thank you. And praise you too. Your grace and mercy, Lord, brought me through. Yeah, come on. Ah. Your grace and mercy. It 
Cause your grace and mercy Yeah, your grace and mercy It was, it was your grace and mercy, Lord Welcome to Maple Park United Methodist Church. It's Freedom's Eve. I know you call it New Year's Eve, and I'm going to tell you why it's Freedom's Eve and why we should think about how we celebrate this evening. Our Father, my God, we pause to say thank you. Thank you for blessing us throughout the year to allow us to make it to the end of this year. We thank you for your provision, your protection, and your presence in each of our lives. And now, God, we ask that you will speak through me to these your people on this Freedom's Eve. Let the words of my mouth, the meditations of our individual and collective hearts be acceptable in your sight, for you are our strength and our redeemer. I know I'm not in a robe. I want you to think about, we all used to dress up to go out on New Year's Eve, as it was called, and you're thinking about where you're gonna go for the celebration. Are you going to someone's house party or are you going to uh, a concert or an event? People had dances, and who are you going to be with on midnight? Uh, well, we don't have to worry about any of that. COVID has really kind of contained us, and it gives us time to really reflect about Freedom's Eve. I want you to think about the fact that we call it New Year's Eve because it's a marketing concept. It is a commercialization of a very historic moment in the lives of the people of God. In, in the book of Exodus, which you just heard read, it deals with uh, how do we remember how uh, God has delivered us from Pharaoh's domination and how God is now giving us instructions on how it is we are to, to live our lives. And so when you look at the 13th chapter of Exodus, it almost has a child asking the question about the past. Here we are in, in a climate where people are debating critical race theory, trying to debate the history as it should have been uh, recorded, was it complete in the telling of our story, our history from slaves, uh, slavery to freedom. So what did Freedom's Eve look like in the Old Testament in biblical times? What does Freedom Eve look like in the New Testament in biblical times? And what does Freedom Eve uh, look like for us? Well, in the Old Testament, God said, uh, every year at this time, you should remember the deliverance, how God brought you out and how God uh, helped you to enter the promised land. And there are some things that you should do, and that's the initiation of the Passover. It's also initi initiation in many ways of the, the tithing process, giving the, the firstborn as a sacrifice back to God. And so that has been translated to mean 10% of your first fruits every month. Give it back to uh, the upbuilding of the temple. And then uh, it was the firstborn child, the firstborn male child, uh, based on the culture of the time in uh, ancient uh, Old Testament Israel. And so what, what that said is the firstborn belongs to God. And so there's this whole uh, blessing and uh, process uh, the firstborn of the animals were used as a substitute for a human sacrifice. And so, one, we have the idea of Israel, the people of, of God, entering into the, the land of promise. And then uh, it talks about uh, how you can remember the ceremony by this Passover meal. Uh, you know, they had to leave in haste, and so... Everything was short, and so that's why you have the unleavened bread, which brings us to up after today, we will have First Sunday, and it will uh, kind of recount the Passover meal. It's not, uh, it's not some moment that we should take lightly, or we should uh, not, not uh, really understand that it is reminding us of a history of God's movement in, in our, uh, from the biblical times, the New Testament, to our times today. 
And so as African Americans, as people of African descent, uh, we can remember how God brought us from slavery to freedom. It's Freedom's Eve. It's not a time for a party. It's a time to sit down, as they did in, in Exodus 13, with our children, with our family members, retelling the story of the journey of our people uh, as uh, provided for us by God. And just like the children of Israel, we had some wilderness moments where we were wandering, going in circles, not making forward progress into the land of promise. And even though we've entered promise, there have been so many battles and challenges that we have to fight, and there are still some we've won, and there are still more to fight. There are more giants uh, that face us. And so we don't have the time on Freedom's Eve to be focused on our next party, our next uh, opportunity to have a, a celebration. It is an opportunity to sit down, remember, and tell generations of our children, our family members. It was family time. Uh, it wasn't, it's not time, certainly we can't do a crowd in, with Omicron raging. And so it's time to sit down and tell the story of what God has done for your family, for my family, and for the church family across uh, these years. And so um, we, we see here in, in this, uh, this, this text so much about how we are to look at the world. What is it that we want to thank God for? What battles do we have to face in 2022? We have a lot going on in our lives. One battle is certainly a, it's a health one. This idea of this virus that keeps mutating and changing and becoming uh, more contagious than the one before it. Uh, will we be able to, uh, how are we going to stop it from spreading in 2022? How do we keep uh, people healthy and viable? How do we restore our society to some sense of, of normalcy? The other battles that we have to fight are our ability uh, to negotiate our uh, citizenship. How do we protect our right to vote in 2022 with a, with a Congress that is split and divided? How does a divided nation stand? How does any, any family, any unit divided against itself stand? Well, the Bible says it cannot. So what will happen as we go into 2022 to heal the divisions we see in the federal government, state governments all across the country are divided as to how people of color, particularly African Americans, Latinos, are to be treated, and the other challenges we have with uh, the immigrants that are here, same uh, challenges they faced in biblical times. And so on Freedom's Eve, you ought to look back over what God has brought you through, and then um, as you prepare to go into the next year, the new year, it is a looking at what is it that, uh, what, what things are you planning uh, for the new year? The journey uh, that we've already come through the land of slavery into the realm of God's free service. How does that look in 2022? Um, what threats exist in the land that you and I are going to have to deal with. This is a very serious moment. It's not a party moment. It's not a frightening moment, but it is a moment to sit down, thinking back and knowing that we're moving forward. It's, it's not a pub, the Passover wasn't a public feast. It was uh, a family celebration that pulled a community together around common past, common history, and a, a common future. And so I, I'm not saying don't, don't, don't celebrate. I'm just saying when you think about this celebration tonight, as you have been blessed to still be here, you made it through so far, almost to midnight. How do you ring that bell in your home? How do you celebrate safely? How do you make sure that you are thinking about tomorrow? and not uh, letting tomorrow become a dim, unknown reality because you've anesthetized yourself with uh, substances or you have refused to look forward into the future and you have just uh, mired yourself in self-pity or, or self-denial. I think this is a great opportunity for families 
and for friends to just talk, even if it's uh, remote, about where are we going in 2022? Where is God taking us? How will I reconnect and revive myself by more engagement with the Word of God? How will I make, make myself more available for the service to the people of God? What is going to change about my behavior? You don't need a New Year's resolution. You need a new way of, of moving forward. And for all of you who are, have family members that are struggling with one illness or another, many of our relatives are struggling with uh, some COVID symptoms. Some are severely ill with COVID. We must pray for a cure, but we almost also must pray for them to be healed uh, and to be restored to, to the families that are waiting to hear a positive note. But in the meantime, do know that God is ever present in our lives as he was with the children of Israel, uh, a pillar by, by day and, and, um, and a sign by night. I thank God that he has kept us in the midst of it all. God has kept us. And I hope that God will continue to bless each one of you on this Freedom's Eve. Just thank God for all the blessings that you have received. If you get nothing else, just thank God for where you are today. God bless you. God keep you. And happy Freedom's Eve. Change.